John Seibin, and we're checking out a really interesting camera from Sony. This is the A5100, and a lot of people were buzzing about this camera, so I picked it up from Amazon uh, to take a closer look on your behalf. Uh, so this is it here. We're going to step through the hardware, and then we'll talk about uh, some of the features that I find unique about it. Uh, what's nice about this, really, though, is that it's a really good video camera. I found this to be actually of many of the interchangeable lens cameras I have tried for video purposes. This is among uh, the best I have used in quite some time. Now, it doesn't have 4K or anything like that, but it is very fast at focusing, even when you're recording. Uh, it has uncompressed out a full-frame HDMI to uh, whatever you want to plug it into, and we'll plug it into my video system here in a minute as well, so that's pretty cool. And then if you're looking to take pictures, uh, for beginners, it's a really good camera in that it's got a lot of hand-holding that it can guide you through uh, and to answer some questions while you're out in the field to try to get uh, your pictures improved. And it's a really nice uh, feature. I don't think it's going to be so great for people looking uh, for a more pro-level camera, but if you're you know, kind of looking to improve your craft, I think you're going to like what this has to offer. So we're going to step through both the video functions and some of that uh, beginner photography functions. Now let's go through the hardware first. And this is an interchangeable lens camera, so you can just pop this lens off and uh, there you go. So you can put another uh, camera lens on here. Now, this is using a Sony E-mount lens. It does not work uh, with any of those Micro Four Thirds without an adapter. So even though it looks like one of these Micro Four Thirds cameras that a lot of manufacturers are making, these are uh, specific lens mounts to Sony. Uh, they do have a number of lenses available and you can certainly uh, pick and choose which one you want. Um, this one is the kit lens. This is a kit that you can buy as one package and it's a, a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture at uh, 16 millimeter to 50 millimeter. So not a, not a big zoom, uh, but it's a good lens to kind of get started with, but you certainly may want to get uh, other lenses if you want more zoom capabilities and that sort of thing. Uh, you can also buy the camera with just the body and then pick out whichever lens you want to go with it. Uh, the sensor size is pretty big. I don't think, maybe it's just about an inch sensor, so it's pretty uh, you know, comparable to an SLR uh, in a very small form factor, which is good. It's also very high resolution. It is a 24.3 uh, megapixel uh, sensor on board, which is uh, excellent all, you know, just for great image quality, but also uh, pretty good in low light. This is very comparable uh, to some you know, larger SLRs, but it's a very compact camera, and I really like uh, the fact that they've put all this into something that they're really aiming at consumers. Now, it may not look like it, but there is a flash on board, and you can push this button in the back here, and it will pop up, and it pops up high enough so that the lens doesn't block it, and it's pretty clever how they were able to stuff this little flash in here, and it works pretty nicely. And the price isn't too bad either. It's about seven or $800 uh, with the lens, so uh, pretty reasonable there. Uh, you have a nice screen on board that'll tilt up 180 degrees. My only fault with it is that it doesn't look that great out in direct sunlight. I do wish that the camera had a viewfinder so when you are out in direct sunlight, you can actually frame the shot a little bit better without squinting or having to put your hand over the screen to be able to see what you're looking at. So that was a gripe. Another gripe is uh, the fact that there's only one dial for controlling the settings on the camera. Normally on a camera this size, like a point and shoot, it's not a big deal because you don't have a lot of range in what you can take with the camera. But this one with an interchangeable lens and a big sensor, you might want to be in a situation where you go manual and you adjust the, the aperture and the shutter speed and the ISO uh, to try to get the perfect setting for the shot that you're trying to take. And you have to kind of you know, jump around a lot in the menus to get uh, all those settings uh, set simultaneously. It's not awful, but uh, you do have to you know, kind of set your first setting, hit the button, and then switch to the other one. A lot of SLRs will have two different dials that you can uh, operate almost simultaneously to try to adjust things to the, uh, the perfect setting. So that uh, is something to keep in mind, if, again, if you're an advanced photographer. The camera supports two different memory card formats. So you can use a standard SD card, which I've got inserted in here, uh, but you can also uh, work work with the Sony proprietary M2 format. It's good to see that Sony is not forcing us into their uh, proprietary formats any longer. You've got a USB port here for data transfer, but it also charges the camera. So the battery's got to be inside the camera when it charges. It takes five hours to charge the battery from dead to full. It's only charging at 500 milliamps, which is like half of what your smartphone normally charges at. Uh, so that's a bit disappointing. So I think they might sell an external battery charger because why not? You can get more money out of you. So you might want to consider that. Uh, what I do love though is that it's got this HDMI output and it will do uncompressed 422 uh, right out the HDMI port when you put it into movie mode. It is fantastic. And we're going to check that out uh, in a minute as we get through uh, the rest of the hardware here. Uh, you've got your zoom up here on the top so you can kind of adjust uh, the, it there. The kit lens also has uh, zoom controls on the side as well as a focus ring so you can do uh, some manual focusing. Again, that's hard outside when the uh, screen is in daylight. Uh, and then you've got some other buttons here, including the help button, which actually I'm going to show you right now. Now, the help button is really cool because it's contextual. It looks at what the camera is trying to do or what the person is trying to do with the camera and will make appropriate suggestions based on that mode. So you see right now it's kind of uh, going back and forth between macro and like a regular shooting mode. But right now it's in macro. If I hit the, uh, the question button down here, the help button, 
Uh, it'll give me some tips for shooting flowers, for example. And you can see up here it's in purple. It says shooting up close with macro. So you can click on flowers, for example, and it'll give me some uh, basic tips for uh, how to maybe position my shot and also uh, some of the controls that I might want to use on the camera and some of these other options as well. So I can uh, hit the uh, help button here to back out. Let me go back in again. Uh, you can look at you know, background defocus control, and there it'll give me some settings there as well. So really cool stuff. And then if I uh, go out of that mode and maybe try to do a, like a wider shot here, let me just zoom out a little bit. You see that it uh, got out of macro mode because it's in auto, and then it's giving me basic techniques like, hey, maybe I should position my subjects off center. Um, when should I go vertical or horizontal? Uh, how to be aware of certain lighting conditions. And you know, again, it's really uh, tying all these things into what you're shooting with. If I put it into movie mode, it would give me tips uh, for taking better pictures when I'm uh, doing movies. So really cool that they have that feature on board. A lot of the other menus are very self-explanatory as well. I'm not going to step through all those in this video, but uh, if we back out here and I go into uh, our camera settings here to pick our shoot mode, uh, it'll tell me exactly what I'm doing here and what, uh, what that mode means and how I uh, can expect it to operate. Now the image quality out of the camera is outstanding and I would expect nothing less out of Sony and in fact I would expect nothing less out of Nikon or Canon either at this price point. They're all up there with just tremendous quality images and you can go to a website like dpreview.com and get uh, some real details at a very minute level about how these sensors might differ but for most consumers all of these cameras at this price point are going to take nice pictures. Now as a video guy I was really excited with the video capabilities of this camera. It is exceptional especially considering the price. So uh, take a look at this shot I got out of my back deck of a bee landing on a flower and it really kept the focus on the bee. It was very active uh, in keeping that focus steady as the bee moved and I moved. I didn't want to get stung of course uh, and I was really impressed with that. I was also impressed as I followed my dog around how it was able to do the same thing. So uh, really good quality and also very easy to use. It's almost camcorder like in its ability to take good video. Now there are some caveats in that uh, you're limited to about 30 minutes at a time of recording time. So if you want to do a very long recording, a camcorder is probably still your best bet. Uh, and also they said that if it, the camera gets too hot, it might actually stop the recording sooner than 30 minutes. So uh, you want to bear all those things in mind and prepare accordingly. Now, if you don't want to rely on the camera to record, uh, you can plug in an HDMI cable and get uncompressed 422 video pushed out through its HDMI port. And look at this, I got it plugged into my Blackmagic video switcher right now. Look how quickly it changes focus here on uh, when I'm pointing the camera out. Again, we're in automatic mode right now. Uh, but as I zoom in here, it's able to adjust the, uh, the, the exposure. It's really pretty neat uh, that this camera is doing this pretty much like a camcorder would, as fast as a camcorder would, yet it's an SLR. And I haven't seen too many cameras like that. I also did my unscientific test here to see if it truly is uncompressed. I'm going to point the camera at myself now as I'm talking to uh, you through the camera. My lips are pretty much in sync here with the audio, and that is an important sign to tell me that the camera's not doing anything to the video after it leaves the sensor. It's basically just pushing that a high def video out over the wire. Now as great as this video quality is, it is hampered by two issues that might be of concern to professional video creators. The first is that you can't actually use the camera while it's plugged into power. So when I tried plugging it into my USB power source, it just was looking for a data connection and really uh, did not let me actually use the camera while it was plugged into power. So that's a big problem. Uh, the other problem is, is that it lacks a microphone port, so you're not going to be able to uh, you bring in external audio through the camera, but of course you could uh, bring in audio separately and then sync it up in post-production. I think it's a good camera for beginners who are looking to get away from the point-and-shoot world and start to move into more serious photography. Those uh, guided menus will really help, help you uh, kind of learn a little bit more about how to take a better picture. I think if you're a professional or you know a really good amateur photographer, this is my, maybe like the secondary camera you keep in your bag. Uh, but you still have your big SLR, primarily because the screen doesn't do too well outside, there's no viewfinder, and I think some of those menus might get on your nerves a little bit, especially the fact that there's only one dial uh, to control the settings, even when you're in manual mode, uh, it's really hard to kind of keep jumping back and forth between you know, the aperture and the shutter settings, and I would like to have had two dials on there to move things around. But beyond that, I think it's a great camera, a really good value, and it's amazing to see just how fast these things are moving. Uh, we don't have 4K video in this thing, but you know what, beggars can't be choosers, but Everything else is just wonderful. So uh, that is the Sony A5100. I'm pretty impressed with this little camera. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.